Hello again. In this video, I will show you how to submit observation requests for future Nmap data acquisitions. The previous video covered the creation and submission of new proposals. To check the status of our demo proposal, first navigate to the proposal portal. Under User Proposals, you can find an overview of all proposals as well as their statuses associated with the user's current role. Following the review process, there are three different statuses a proposal can be set to. Accepted, Accepted with Modifications, and Rejected. Accepted with Modifications means that some parts of your proposal require review and adjustments. Please adapt and resubmit the proposal. Rejected means that, following a thorough review process, your proposal was found to be insufficient. Please create and submit a new proposal. I have good news, though. The demo proposal we submitted has been accepted. After the proposal status is changed to released, we can continue to place our future observation requests. If you are still in the proposal portal, click on Back. Starting from the Instrument Planning Portal homepage, navigate to the Observation Request Portal. As we want to submit a new observation request, select the Planning and Submission tool. The sequence of steps for placing future observation requests is quite simple. First, we have to specify product type, processing mode, and the processing options. Following, we specify a geographical area of interest by providing a center coordinate and a radius link. After that, we specify acquisition-related parameters, such as the time window, the off-nadir angle, or cloud coverage. Based on these specifications, possible future data takes are returned. The last step is the submission of the planning support results as an order. It's as easy as that, no? Now, let's take it one step at a time. First, we need to select an eligible proposal. In our case, this will be the accepted demo proposal. Then, we are asked to specify product type, product format, and processing modes. The following product types are provided to the users. Level 1B, representing top of atmosphere radiance, level 1C, representing geocoded top of atmosphere radiance, and level 2A, representing surface reflectance. For the level 2A product, you can choose between different atmosphere correction modes, that is land, water, and combined land water. In the combined mode, land and water areas were processed separately using the atmosphere correction processors for land and water, respectively. Once you did your selection, the Processing Options Import form will pop up. Here, we are asked to select different processing options. For more information on the processing options, please refer to the Info buttons or the User Manual and click on OK when you're done. Click on Apply Settings on the left side panel to enable the selection of your area of interest. Please note, once you click Apply Settings, those settings will be applied to all following observation requests you submit under this eligible proposal during this planning support session. To choose the center coordinate of our area of interest, you have two options. Either select the mapping tool in the upper left corner of the map window and place the center coordinate on the map, or enter the center coordinate in the latitude and longitude boxes in the upper left corner of the map window. After that, you will need to specify the area by drawing a circle of a certain radius length. It is possible to zoom in and out by using the plus and minus keys or the mouse wheel in order to choose your exact area of interest. We chose the first option and picked a point on the map to mark the center of our area of interest and then draw a circle to mark the extent of the area. Once you've done that, you are asked to add a short description for the area of interest in the text field with a maximum length of 12 characters. It really can be just the name of your area of interest. When clicking on the blue button, Point Multipass, a parameter input form opens up. Here, you are asked to specify further parameters. Under Data Take Parameters, you can place the start and end date, as well as the acceptable off-nadir angle for each data take. If you are interested in day images, you should stick to the default path direction, descending. If you are interested in water images, you may check and adapt the sun glint parameters. The cloud coverage parameters are the last we are asked to adjust. Please note the information provided when hovering over the cloud coverage threshold info button. You may need to adjust this value based on your use case. 
Click on Save and Calculate Now. To understand the concept behind point multipass ordering, let me give you some background. The basic concept of ordering is that a user provides the mission planning with several alternative options. The user can order one data take, but is not eligible to choose one out of a set of data takes. If, for instance, the first data take option is not applicable due to cloud coverage forecast or due to conflicting acquisition requests, the second data take option would still be available to mission planning for commanding. Providing mission planning with multiple alternative acquisition options thus increases the probability of successful data take acquisitions. Depending on your use case, you can either increase the probability of a successful data take acquisition by broadening the acquisition window and enlarging the acceptable off nadir range, or you provide only a small set of alternative data take options, or even one option only, if you prefer a narrow off nadir range and or a small acquisition window. Once the results have been calculated, you can find an overview of all potential future data takes on the left-hand side by clicking on the I button. You can select and deselect a specific dataset query, zoom to one, as well as delete, analyze, or recalculate dataset queries. Once you have selected one or multiple potential future data takes, you can find an overview of those under Selection. If you are content with your selection, click Continue to Validation and Use for Submission and Submit. To finalize the process of submitting a future observation request, click on End. Congratulations! You have successfully placed your first observation request. I'll see you in the following video covering the ordering of archive data.